In this video, I'll be doing an unboxing and setup of this FortiGate 60F. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, stay tuned. So guys, welcome to Joshua's Tech Tips. So we recently got some FortiGates at work. So I wanted to do a quick unboxing and setup of one for you today. All right, so if we open the box, we have the quick start guide that we are not going to use. Moving on, we have some mounting accessories. And we have a network cable. And if we remove this part, here we have the actual power cable. So we have the plug we have the actual brick and last but not least the star of the show here we have the 40 net 40 gate 60 f firewall device look at the front we have the 40 net logo as well as some indicator lights and if we look at the back of the device here we have a range of different ports so first we have the dc the power port we have a little reset port there. We have the USB port. And we have a console port if you want to use a console cable, for example. Here we have two dedicated WAN ports. A DMZ port. And we have two 40 link ports that you could use with your 40 switches, etc. And last but not least, we have five switch ports. Next, we're going to move on to the actual configuration. So I'm currently connected to port 1 on the FortiGate. I'm, I've connected my laptop to port 1. By default, that's what the port you need to connect to if you're conne connecting to the web interface. You bring up any web browser and you type in https colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.1.99. You're going to get this error, but that's okay because we're using a cell sign certificate to access the 40 gate so you're just going to accept and continue by default um, the username is admin and there's no password so we're going to enter that admin and login and next you'll be prompted now to change your password or should I say create a new password so you want to create a secure password once finished, click OK, and you'll be prompted to enter back your username and the new password that you just created. Select Login. It would want to take you through a wizard here at this point. You know, I'm just going to select Later because we're going to do our own thing. And upon logging in here, it has a little video showing you what's the latest feature in this um, version of the firmware. Right, so this is the FortiGates dashboard, right? This is the main dashboard. Here we have some information, some useful information, um, such as host name, serial, firmware, mode. Um, you know, we're using that mode. Um, WAN IP, uptime, etc. We also have, you know, license info and stuff like that. So this video is just meant to be a basic setup. We're not going to do anything really advanced here, right? This is just to show you how to initially configure it to get internet services working on the FortiGate. So first I'm going to go to system and settings, and I'm just going to change the name of this FortiGate, All right? And I'm going to name it FG dash 60f dash lab next i'm going to choose my time zone All right so my time zone would be georgetown and i'm going to select apply So next, we're going to go over now to the Network tab. All right, and we're going to select Interfaces tab. 
here if you look at the top you could see the 40 gauge shows you you know it gives you a little nice um, indication of what ports are currently co connected so I'm connected my laptop is connected to port 1 and I currently have the one, um, one one interface connected to my internet connection right actually it's connected to my internet connection which is connected to another router but never mind that so here we have a overview of our um, ports we have the 40 link ports we have the DMZ ports and it shows you um, some information in terms of the IP address associated with the port as well as the administrative access type that is enabled so for the 11 port that's currently connected as you can see by the green indicator and this is the IP address assigned and for the VLAN switch these are the five ports um, the switch ports so by default they're all in one VLAN one um, default VLAN but we have the option of changing that if we wish to do so right and assign a different ports to different VLANs as you can see we have one DTP client which is myself that's connected to that right so we're gonna go into one one and I'm gonna just set an alias of internet since this is what my internet connection connects to on the rule we could you know choose if you want a different rule assigned to the sport I'm gonna leave it as one seeing that this would be our one interface and if we know the upstream and downstream um, speeds we have, we could set that so it'd be able to aid us in terms of bandwidth consumption and stuff like that. However, I'm going to leave it as it is. Um, for the interface, we have DHCP or manual um, options. Currently, it's set as DHCP and this is the IP address that I got from our DHCP server, which is my router. However, I want to change that and most of you all probably would change it if you're Need to, if you need to access your firewall remotely, for instance, you probably want to set a static IP. So I've set, I'm going to set the static IP to this interface. This is my 1-1 interface. Right. Uh, next, we have the administrative access types. So we could set whatever, this would be based on your environment, how you want to access this um, interface so I'm going to select HTTPS HTTP I don't have a 40 manager so I'm going to uncheck FMG um, access and I'm going to select SSH and that's about it I think that we are more or less good on this interface I'm going to select OK so as we can see it the alias has changed to internet and it has the new static IP as well as the administrative access types that I set Next, I'm moving over to port 1 on our switch, right? So I'm going to name this alias um, something simple as well. I'm probably going to just name it inter internal LAN. Alright, and um, these are the interface members here, right? All five ports are part of this um, VLAN. So um, I'm going to leave that as it is, but you know, for other advanced configurations, you could assign it accordingly. Also, you could change the VLAN ID. I'm going to leave it as zero. We could also change the role on this interface. I'm going to leave it as LAN. For addressing mode, this interface currently uses a static IP address by default because that's how we access it by via the static IP, um, which is 192.168. 1.99 as you can see up in the web browser as well this is the same IP address I use to access this interface you have the option you could change it to DHCP if you like however I'm going to leave it as manual and leave that there however it's recommended that you change it from the default IP address you know for security reasons right for administrative access I'm going to uncheck the 40 manager access I'm going to leave everything else in play and for the address um, range, oh, oh, my bad, you have the option of making this firewall a DHCP server on this interface or not. So I'm, by default it's a DHCP server, so I'm going to leave it on as well as I'm going to leave the range that it currently has assigned. I'm going to enable device detection, so I'm able to tell what type of devices are on my network. And I'm going to select OK. It's just giving me a warning I'm currently connected to this interface, so that's fine. I'm click OK. Right, and if we scroll down, we should see the alias changed as I guess that was the only thing we really changed. 
So I'm going to bring up a command prompt now and I'm going to ping Google's public DNS servers. Right, so this should fail, right? This just goes to show you we don't have internet access by default with firewalls unlike your little ho your home routers and stuff. You know, firewalls you actually need to be you need to explicitly um, state um, what has access to what, right? So we need to actually create a static route. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to static route, create new. And here for destination, we want to allow any traffic, right? Which is a 0000, right? That's any IP or any subnet. We want to let it out of the gateway. So the gateway will be, the gateway address would be the interface that this current interface is connected to. Sorry, my one interface is connected to, which is 172.16.0.1. And as you can see, it automatically selected the one interface because it recognized that was the default gateway. So once you select the default gateway and your one interface, that's it, you're just gonna select OK. And there we can see our static route was successfully created. So moving on, we want to go to policy and objects, firewall policy, and here we'd see we have two policies, the implicit deny policy, that is at the bottom, and at the top we have an internal to internet well one one policy. This is basically the policy which allows our traffic from our internal LAN through to the external internet. So I'm gonna name this as default allow, right? And basically this policy, um, you would see the incoming interface as internal LAN, outgoing, one one, source, any, destination, all, schedule, always, service, all. You know, so this basically just allows um, any traffic from our internal LAN out to the internet, or one one I should say. And here are the security profiles, so we're gonna enable all of this. Right, and this basically, these services need um, licenses, right? So unless you have the appropriate license, you may not be able to use some of these services, right? Um, everything else, more or less, I'm gonna leave it um, as is. Right, and as you can see, the security profiles have been enabled for this specific um, policy, firewall policy. And guys, this is just a basic setup and other, other videos to follow. I'll be showing you some more advanced configurations and some fine tuning to our configurations as well. So now everything if it's working properly we should be able now to get out to the internet so let's give it a try so let's bring back up our command prompt all right and we're gonna ping same google open dns server and success we see we can actually reach out to the internet now via ping so let's actually open our web browser now let's search for google um, YouTube sorry and as we can see we could successfully get onto the internet guys so that brings us to the end of this video remember this was just meant to be a basic initial setup of this 40 gig device however in the up and coming weeks I'll be showing you how to further optimize this configuration as well as some advanced features of the 40 gig if there's something in particular you like to see me configure let me know in the comment section below and I'll see how best I can facilitate it. In closing, remember if you like the content I'm creating, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the notification bell to be notified once a new video is released. Thanks again for viewing. See you soon.